What's happening everybody? The Poets here. I hope you're doing well and staying safe. Today's topic is a bit of water cooling and fixing a particular issue. Right here is Frank, Frankenstein. It's my test bed system, test bed, uh, inside of the O11 Dynamic XL. And it has a custom loop just cooling an 8700K right now. And the reason for this loop is because I was given an engineering sample for an interesting water block. It's the Tri-Swift water block by Fluix. And it actually has two ports going in and one port coming out, which is pretty unique. I'd like to see really interesting and creative things happen in the water cooling world. An issue that I am having, it's not with the block, it's with this right here. I got a kink. So my system got kind of kinky today. Uh, I just put this together and I wasn't too happy with one of the types of tubing that I had on hand. And so I replaced it all, but I kept this one right here because I was like, eh, it's short. It doesn't need to do much. Well, today while I was actually playing a game, Battlefield 5, I suddenly noticed the flow rate inside of the reservoir right here really started to slow down right in front of my eyes. And I was like, what's going on? So I looked at this and I noticed it was bending in a way it shouldn't bend. All the rest of the tubing right here is uh, Duraflex by EK. This is this uh, Primo Chill, uh, I don't know, it, it's, it's horrible. I'll show you in the video. So this is what I initially used inside of the custom loop and I just wasn't happy with it pretty much right away because even though it's the same exact size for the fittings that I have inside the system, it was just too loose for my take. Uh, if I just like pulled a little bit, they would just pop right out. So I went back to this. This is what I'm used to, EK DuraClear. It's, it's supposed to be the same size outer diameter, but this is thicker and it actually is really, really secure. So I ended up replacing pretty much the entire loop. This entire loop right here and going around the back is the EK DuraClear and I like it a lot. This right here, this was the one that I actually decided to leave when I was building the loop. I decided to leave it because it's so short. And I was like, you know what? There's enough pressure here and here. There's no way that these are gonna pop out. Well, it failed in a different way. It's got a kink right here. So here's a better angle of the kink. So right there is where it's pressing on all the fluid. So the flow rate actually drastically reduced once I saw that kink just suddenly basically pop. And it was like, okay, I'm no longer gonna allow a lot of fluid to come in here. And so not only did I notice that this portion right here that was facing me was flatter, but this top portion right here for the reservoir really slowed down greatly. And so this is a great example as to why you wanna plan out your loop so that when anything like this happens, you can just easily drain the loop. And so what you see here is the drain valve. So I have this attached to a lot of extra tubing so that I can just undo these twist ties, drop this into a bucket, and then open the drain valve, and then open the top of the reservoir to allow fresh air to come in, and pretty much the entire system just drains out into a bucket at that point. It then only takes me maybe two, three minutes to replace that tube with this type of tubing right here, a nice thicker one, the EK DuraClear, and then just close this drain valve, fill the system back up with the same fluid. It's fresh fluid that I just put in like two days ago, and uh, then I'm good to go. Simple as that. So first I open up the drain valve, it's going into the bucket, and now I'm just opening the reservoir. And there it goes. So taking this off should be simple enough. Really put that on there. There we go. So that just popped right off. Clean this off a little bit. And now all that's left is refilling the loop.
So this is flowing much better right now. I can already tell the difference here. And as it's bleeding the system, meaning all the air is still has, you know, still traveling throughout the entire system until it reaches the top of the reservoir. This is definitely a much better flow rate. Um, and it's kind of cool that I can just tell visually because of this type of fluid. The fluid I'm using here is the Primo Chill View. It's their Ocular Flow Sterling Silver. It is really cool. Uh, it does take some prep work and people have had mixed results with it. I'm only using this for about a week total. If you do the right thing, it should last you maybe six months to a year. Um, if you don't prep your system with uh, the correct uh, system prep and make sure that your reservoir and everything is squeaky clean, then this could actually gunk up on you and you'll have a very fun time cleaning all your components. So I've always wanted to use this. I'm really happy with it so far, come like day two or three. Uh, so use at your own um, enjoyment. That's all I can say with this. So I hope this uh, helps to add a little bit of less mystery to water cooling. It's actually a very simple process. Uh, I just up and decided to do this. I was like, hey, let me just film it for you guys. Uh, overall, uh, having better flow rate will drop your temperatures drastically when it comes to any type of kinks or uh, basically blockages inside of a loop. So in general, if you're just using distilled water with some additives to make sure that you don't have like algae or growth, you know, growing inside of your system, um, then you don't have to worry too much about maintenance. But when you're using a more solid looking fluid, like a pastel, you need to pay a bit more attention and you may need to do some maintenance, like draining the loop, cleaning things out every six months to a year. So it's going to be based on your own unique system. Right now, this is bleeding, uh, meaning all the air is basically getting out of the whole thing. So you're gonna hear like all kinds of interesting noises, but it's a fun process. I really love this. I will say that um, you notice that when I turn this on, um, the whole system came on. Normally I never do that, but I know this processor very well. It's an 8700K that's delitted with liquid metal and an, an aftermarket copper IHS. So I already know that just for a fraction of a second with the system booting up before the fluid actually gets to it, it was gonna be cold, so I would have no issues whatsoever. Typically what I do is actually have a second power supply outside of the system plugged just into the pump and maybe the fans or radiator for whatever reason and allow that then to just kick on and fill up the whole system, get all the air out, and then I'll turn the PC on at that point. So take some preferences, but do it the latter way. Don't do as I just displayed in this video. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I love doing this stuff. I have a lot more interesting builds coming up, a lot more interesting builds. This is just something fun, test bed system, and big shout out to uh, Fluix for their engineering sample of the Tri-Swift water block. It's interesting, I will say. Basically you have fluid coming in here, two, two tubes, the water's combining, and at that point it's adding turbulence. And their theory is that that turbulence is going to enhance the heat transfer rate for that CPU block. So I'm interested to see what all of my tests come up to be, but this is just an engineering sample, so I'm not going to compare it to anything else because as with any reviewer, if you get an engineering sample, just study the engineering sample and try not to compare it to anything else because this is going to change and they've already told me that this is going to change a little bit. So overall, it's, this is fun. And thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.